easy to do. If you have, if you give, ask some question, uh, which is some, give some predicate which is satisfied by a thousand records in the database, you gotta guess a thousand bits. And that's computationally infeasible. So now the difficulty of access is gonna become proportional, exponential, oh, not proper, exponential in the size of the answer. And of course the immediate question is what can be obfuscated in this way? And I'm gonna answer this question in about five minutes. So here is, let me give you the formal definition and it's very similar to what you've seen before. There is a database, now I have, here now I have multiple columns, not just one. Uh, there is some predicate and I'll make it more precise what classes of predicate I can support here. And let's say here is a set of rows satisfying this predicate. And now I'm giving you a different ideal functionality and I highlighted the relevant part. So this is the ideal functionality with exponential slowdown. So if you give it a predicate and the predicate is satisfied by nothing in the database, it just uh, barfs, it returns nothing. But if the predicate is satisfied, then it returns the right answer with probability that's inversely exponential in the size of the answer. Or else it doesn't give you anything. So this ideal functionality satisfies uh, this notion of exponential slowdown. That is, the, your chance of getting correct information out of the database is inversely pro exponential in the size of the answer. And I also wanted to satisfy these properties. Probably correct retrieval, virtual black box, which is just security, and um, um, uh, polynomial expansion, okay? So even if you don't follow the details of the definition, I hope you understand this part, okay? That the ideal functionality gives me this property that I want by design. Now the, the real question is, can I obfuscate so as to satisfy this property, to make, to guarantee that in the obfuscated database, this property holds with overwhelming probability. Let me work through a simple example. So suppose I have a list of people, name, year of birth, and email, and email is the field, uh, is the column that I want to protect. Now, if I run a query like this, select email where name is Smith, okay? There are two records in this database. So I want user, I want to make sure that user cannot learn email of either of those Smiths without guessing two bits, okay? And, but, and if he supplies year of birth, because there are, uh, he only knows year of birth, uh, there are two bits that need to be guessed because there are two records that satisfy this. But if he gives me this query, if he happens to know both name and year of birth, there is only one record that satisfies it. So the user, I want to force the user to only guess one bit, okay? And you think like, why does he have to guess anything because this is precisely described, but this is just a technical property that I want. N records satisfy some predicate, I want the user in the obfuscated database to guess n bits before he can get to it. And that'll separate legitimate people for whom n is small and they, there is a small number of bits to guess from illegitimate users who want to extract everything and then there are a lot of bits for them to guess, okay? So here is what the obfuscation look like. And it's kind of, it's becoming a little bit complicated although it's based on the same idea. Now, again, I try to highlight the relevant parts for you. So, Let's look at the first record here. Uh, you encrypt every field using a hash of a random four bit key. And the reason it's four bit, it's because you know, that's the size of the database, four. And then if you learn uh, a particular, if you know the value of a particular field in the column, you don't learn all bits of the key. You learn only some bits of the key. Okay, and hidden bits depend on other database entries. Like for example, if you know last name Smith, in the first row, you learn only two bits of the uh, key. And the reason you learn only two bits and two bits are unknown is because there is another row in the database where uh, Smith appears. So that's why you only, you, you, two bits are hidden from you. You have to guess them, okay? But if you, for example, know uh, in the second row, if you know year of birth, like 1952, then you learn everything but one bit because there are no other rows in the database where that um, uh, year of birth appears. So uh, there is only one row with this year of birth. So you learn all bits but one, okay? And then as always, you know, to make retrieval possible, you need to uh, help user verify that he found the right row. So every value has to be additionally hashed for verification purposes because otherwise it's not clear how to do retrieval. So uh, this is just a simple example of how this is done for this mass privacy. 
And to answer the question, what can you obfuscate? Actually, quite a bit, okay? You can obfuscate, it turns out, any logical circuit, so and, or, and not, of equalities and inequalities over individual field values. So you can obfuscate any circuit of the flavor. If, um, you know, give me everything where x is equal to something and y is equal to something, or z is not equal to something. That's all efficiently obfuscatable. Okay, so that's, it's not everything you might want to obfuscate, but it's a useful plus, okay? It's, uh, it's more than point functions for sure. And uh, it uh, comes with a proof that the obfuscation is secure. Let me uh, just give you a slightly more general presentation of the same idea. That here, here is the idea. So you have some fields which are kind of access fields and then you have data field. And you want to be able to access data field only by supplying corresponding key fields. So if there are n rows in the database, then you encrypt your data with a fresh random key. And the size of the key is n bits. Okay, which is equal to the number of rows in the database. And then for each field, for each access field, you make it so that if there are m rows in which the value of x is different, then you learn m bits of the key. Why different? Because if you want x to be, if x is unique, then you should learn this key right away. Because it's, it's a, this means that the query is, should not, is not real, should not be obfuscated because you uniquely identified the row. But if you supply some common value like zip code or gender or something, you know, there are, you only learn a small number of bits uh, here. And the same thing for y. And of course the bits you learn by supplying x and by supplying y are different. So that's why it's kind of secret sharing. But here shares of the secret, they overlap. And the overlap here is ex the number of common bits is exactly equal to the number of rows where x and y are the same as in this row. Okay, so it's kind of weird secret sharing where secrets are overlapping and the size of overlap tells you something about uh, the database. Okay, so uh, this is as formal as I'm gonna get. I actually have the proofs, but you know, I didn't want to uh, dump them on you. So, but I'm claiming that a construction like this is actually indistinguishable from the ideal functionality or rather can be simulated in the ideal functionality and therefore does not leak any more information than the ideal functionality where you get the answer with probability that's uh, inversely exponential uh, in the size of the answer. Yeah? So suppose one key field is named, the other is uh, year of birth. Now if I try all the value for year of birth, do I get all the keys? Uh, yes, you would, you would. And because the ideal functionality permits that. Yeah. yeah. But in that sense, it's kind of, by issuing multiple queries, independent queries, I can't get a lot of information. That's true, that's true. Uh, and that's just, all I'm claiming is that I'm gonna be indistinguishable from my I'm just saying, maybe the, the, it's more desirable to have some ideal functionality to somehow deal with that as well. But well, it's, um, it's hard to find a natural definition because the idea is that, you know, if it's a really large database, then there will be a lot of repetitions of common um, fields. So like for example, if half of them have the same year of birth, supplying that year of birth is not really gonna gain you anything, okay? Right, right. I mean, if you really know the unique year of birth that's there, yeah, you'll pull it out. But if there are a lot of, um, like think of, if it's like a census database, you know? There, there are like, you know, 100,000 people there with every year of birth. So supplying year of birth will not get you anything. So I'm thinking by issuing one year of birth, I'm not, I, I don't try to decrypt, I only extract the key bit, and then I issue a query for all other year of birth. Can I get all the key bit before I'm trying, before I'm guessing? Um, so if you just supply one year of birth, well, you'll extract key bit, well, I mean, for the rows where that year of birth is such, yes, because this is done for each row, so you like, but, but these key bits will be of different keys. Okay. So that's not gonna get you all that much. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, this oh, is done on per row basis, so okay. these will be key bits of different keys, so. Okay, all right, so there are some uh, technical difficulties